Connecting to a data source in Power BI is not unlike doing so in several other programs. The details differ, as we might expect, but the basic idea is the same. As usual, first we open the program. We have to open a separate instance of Power BI for each file, but as long as we keep track of which is which, it's not an issue. Once we have that, we can connect. The fact that we find the data group on the Home tab tells us how important this is. The Home tab is the frequent use stuff. Among the usual sources for data, we uh, use Excel workbooks pretty regularly, so we can click Excel workbook in the data group and navigate to the file. This is pretty routine stuff. Double click the file to open it up. Once we connect to the file, we can take a look at how Power BI handles the data. We use the navigator box to do this. What Power BI needs is information laid out in the columns and rows fashion we usually see in Excel. So a worksheet there is a good starting point to follow the process. And it tells us it can see both bona fide tables and whole worksheets as data sources, as we can see here from the icons. If it sees more than one block of data or more than one worksheet, the navigator will allow us to preview and use any or all of them. To preview, we click the name, not the check mark there, for whichever block of information we want to see. The navigator will then show us the layout of that batch of data on the right side. Some blocks of data will need to be cleaned up if they have stuff in them which isn't either labels or data. We won't try to wrestle with that in this case. Assuming the information is clean, that is, no extraneous information which needs removing, we can click the correct checkbox on the left, say for the small table of data here, and then go to the bottom of the box and click Load. And the table, that's how Power BI thinks of it, will be added to our data model or collection of tables. We can now see it sitting over here in the data pane on the right. Adding other kinds of data to the model uh, is not too much different. Power BI needs the row and column layout, preferably with headers or labels at the top to work properly, but that information can come from, say, an access database as well. In fact, that source is quite compatible. We start the same way. We can click the drop down for Get Data over here in the data group, slide down to More since an access database may not be listed in that main bunch of stuff. And when we bring up the Get Data box, we can find Access Database here, or we can click on the database category and find it once again on the right hand side. Give it a click, click Connect at the bottom. And again, we are asked to navigate to our database. I'll just double click this one here. And once again, the navigator comes up and we can see both tables and queries. Queries function very similarly to tables in this situation. And again, we can decide which ones we want by clicking the name, not the check mark, of whichever table or query. Once we decide which one we do want, we can click its checkbox, and it's again at the bottom, click on Load. Once again, it will be added to the data model. Usually it takes a few seconds. From here, the process is pretty straightforward. We can go to the table view on the left-hand side here by clicking the appropriate icon, and then click whichever table to see what Power BI has, in fact, brought in. We can also go to the button for the model view, or icon for the model view, give that a click, and decide which fields in each table need to be connected to which others. This is, again, a fairly normal procedure. And then we go back to the report view to build our actual visuals. The recipe for connecting to data sources is fairly universal. Usually the limiting factor is the types of sources a given program can talk to, but like Power BI, that's almost always on the increase these days. So the procedure here stands us in good stead.